All right, guys, so we're at the chairing head, and our next order of operation is to uh, tram or indicate the vise in. So when we make our pocket, it's going to be nice and even and level. Um, the cherry head is not, in fact, the uh, same spindle size as a J head. I believe it's the same spindle size as an M head, so I'm not 100% sure. But uh, that brings up our next problem is um, I have my Indicol for a J head, but of course it's too big. It does seem that you could use it for both, but what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a some kind of a spacer here so I could clamp it. Um, so that's going to bring up our next job. We're going to run over to the lathe. I have a nice piece of uh, brass or bronze. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I'm going to make a little um, spacer with maybe like a little cup feature on the end so it fits on the quill nicely. So I can slide it. I can slide it on here, <clears throat> and it fits on the spindle very nicely. And then I could just tighten it up, and there you go. So um, let me set up the indicator, and then we could tram the head in, and then we could uh, talk about making our cut. All right, guys. Um, we have our interrapid um, indicator set up, and we have the uh, vise pretty much trimmed in. This is a, um, I guess this indicator is good to half a thousandth, or that's what it's graduated as, or half. I'm sorry, half a tenth. So we'll bring our vise across. It may be moved two tenths, and you can see that we're actually engaged because it just fell off as I got past the jaw of the vise. So, I mean, <clears throat> that's going to be super accurate enough. There you go. So that's good to go. The bolts are already tightened for the vise, so we're good. Um, now let me get this junk out of here, and then I want to talk to you about collets. Okay, guys. Um, so here we are. I wanted to talk to you guys about collets. And 
uh, I said before in the first part of the video, and um, make sure you watch that if you haven't, that there's three types of collets that this machine could possibly use, depending on what kind of spindle is in it. Uh, there's one collet here that isn't related to this machine, but I wanted to put it out here just so you get an idea of the size. This is your typical Hardinge 3 C collet. Um, so you kind of got an idea of you know how big these collets are. Much smaller than a 5C. Uh, this is the Bridgeport B3 collet. And I ended up, I bought two of them, but I ended up having a ton of them. I think I found six or seven of them. So that wasn't the collet that fit my machine. Then here was your number seven uh, brown and sharp collet. And this is the one that really kind of fit, but the collet stuck out of the, uh, the nose of the spindle quite a bit. And of course, we had the snow and the ice. All the deliveries were delayed. This was the last collet that I got. This is the Morris Taper 2. And that is the collet that fits in the spindle. So I didn't get that till Monday. Um, it's today. Today's uh, Tuesday. So I only got this yesterday. It took over a week to get it. But this is what fits into the spindle. So uh, I, not really knowing which collet I needed, I only ordered one. Because, um, you know, what's the point of ordering a full set of collets if I'm not sure it's going to fit my machine? Uh, and then I dug around in my pile of uh, end mills. Uh, and I only really found one, and I, I'm not even sure if this is a real bull end mill or like a homemade type of reground end mill, but this is the only end mill I have that's a half inch, half inch shank. So uh, we're going to give this one a try. Um, I have a lot, a lot of smaller bull end mills, but I only have one. Morris Taper 2 collet. On that note, uh, since I don't really know if it's, you know, it was a worthwhile thing for me, but I, I went ahead and I ordered an ER32 and an ER20 um, Morris Taper 2 collet chuck. So that might well serve me better. Um, the ER collets in the Morris Taper 2. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, quite frankly, I don't know how, how often I'm going to use this machine. But I think um, we're going to try that. And if I if I do use it a lot and I see that I need it for other things, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, you know, order some more. But let me get this set up. Uh, I can show you the Morris Taper 2 in the quill. Okay, I can show you the uh, Morris Taper 2 in the quill. And see that, that's hitting the draw bar now, so it's it's right up there. Whereas it seemed like the uh, Brown and Sharp 7 did fit. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of jiggle room in there, but you see all the stick out I had. And I didn't think that was appropriate. So, uh, and the thread seemed to be the same. So let me get this uh, set up here with the um, with the end mill. Get that nice and tucked up. I'm going to tighten that up. And then we'll actually get the part centered and we'll get ready to make our cut. Okay guys, let's talk about how to set this up. Um, this is the radius, so this will set the radius of our cut. Um, we're going to go from zero, we're going to go to approximately two. So that being half the diameter, that should give us a four inch radius. Uh, and then you, of course you want to add the width of the cutter to it, so uh, if it's a half inch, that should give us like a four and a quarter radius. So um, the instructions 
say to start slowly at a time and as you cut you want to use your th 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 the thumb the thumb wheel here to increase as you go so I kind of feel like this is going to be a long process because not only do we have to make it a cut we have to go you know from front to back plus we have to increase the radius so we're probably going to be here for a while so uh, let me get on my safety glasses and get set up here and then let's start cutting and see how it goes all right guys I'm centered on the part um, so make sure I focus in the parts tightened I have some WD-40 to keep this uh, loop because it's aluminum uh, I locked up my x-axis I won't be needing that I'm just going to be using my Y to traverse front to back got my vise tightened the uh, device is on backwards because I had to bring it out a little bit further and uh, let's uh, give this a try and see what, what happens and I think I'm just going to be working the uh, the uh, z-axis a little bit obviously you can see there's no um, adjustment on the actual spindle so that's the only motion that I really need We have action.
Okay guys, so what's my takeaway with this? Um, if you don't have a CNC machine, this is your only option. If you have the chairing head, you might as well use it for something. Um, not, don't think this is really the application that it's designed for. I think it's for probably more precise die work. Um, but it, it did what I needed it to do. And, um, you know, I'm happy that I spent an hour messing around with it. And, you know, getting, getting something done. So, there you have it, folks. Okay, guys, so we're at the uh, 56 bridge port. And uh, this is what I made that part for. So, it's just going to sit on the ram and it's going to hold this from spinning this way. And you can see it. It's, uh, it's not exactly the proper, um, I guess the radius or the uh, diameter doesn't exactly fit on this. But it keeps it from spinning this way and this way. I can tell that already. So that's a, that's a job I'm going to call done uh, when I get my CNC up and running my three axis I will make a new one with the proper diameter but for now this is just what I needed.